Hey everyone, it is Shar from Shar's Fashionation. Yes, I am holding these up and the pockets are in. Oh my gosh, both pockets. First try. <coughs> Everything is all stitched in place, except wrapped with the zipper and then finish off the top. And what I did was, here, let me adjust the camera down so you guys can see so I'm not having to step all over the place. La. <laughs> anyway, so I took up the cups on the bottom. You guys already know this is going to be a high-waisted pant anyway. I'm not going to pull that up too much. That will be way too much. Anyway, so, and then just let your fabric lay loose um but the pockets are so perfect in the and so like I figured okay I figured red might make me look like super chubby <laughs> so what I'm going to do is actually take this fabric roll it back stitch it and then I'm gonna try to do the invisible zipper in these. Yes, I'm still wearing my periodic table pants. Um, so this is gonna be kind of fun to finish up. Now here's the whole thing is I will show you the stitching that I did do on this. Sorry about it being blinded by the light. <laughs> right okay so if you saw the other video which obviously will go up before this video what the heck is on my phone um you will know that I had the stay stitches and I went ahead sewed the stay stitches on the legs the back and some on the front only because I need to put in the zipper okay but if you really paid attention you would also note that I went ahead and did the pocket now if you look at the pocket like this so you're like there is no way like Okay, that's not even the same color. It doesn't matter because that's on the inside. Who's going to see that? Except for me. Okay, and you guys know it's there because it's on here. Um, <laughs> but going down here to where the opening is for the pocket. Right? Oh my gosh. For my first try of this, I'm actually, I'm proud of myself for my first inside pocket like that. Oh, and using the serger stitch. La. First around the pocket top and then to hold it all together so um of course down here at the bottom you guys know I don't, I would only sew to a certain point and that's what I showed you and then I went ahead and trimmed this back and absolutely perfect I'm only gonna have to roll this back maybe a half inch and then stitch it down which again I'm going to use that serger stitch but that's not all I have more of this beautiful fabric left. Ah, I do. And I'm thinking we'll come over here. Because you guys know I can't pause anything. So what I'm thinking is taking it, draping it, Maybe we'll do some sort of vest on here. 
Although I was watching Bernadette the other day and she showed some plaid fabric that she had or gingham. I think it was more gingham than plaid. But hey, we all seem to have that in our stash. I think I have a similar color to what she had. Okay, and as she was just going like this and then brought the collar up. But see, now here's the problem is for me, the front and the back don't match like what she has. So what I would have to do on this side, serious if I want to do this, I would have to split this in half. Run with me on this. Split this in half to make it and thank you for the uh, for the idea that came into my head, Bernadette. Um, is to take this and literally make it look like it's going to be a shawl, which is actually going to be a vest. It's going to be a vest. My investments in fabric. <laughs> Oh, this is going to be great, right? Because um, I have this amount, okay, and then I have the trims that are left. So I have plenty of that here, and then what I trimmed off of the bottom of those pants. So I can actually put together either a vest or make it look like what I just said, you know. So basically, let's shake things off of it. So basically, um, you can just take it, drape it over, make it look like it's going to be some sort of shawl, but it's not going to be a shawl at all. That's kind of a funny thing. It's not going to be a shawl at all. Um, and I'm not going to be a charlatan about it. <laughs> That's kind of funny, a charlatan. Uh, we'll just turn it this way. It looks better that way. Okay. And then we'll just take this. And then we can take another quarter panel across. And then we have all this and the other to work for the back. Okay. And then I have plenty of fabric that I could use as a liner fabric. And, oh my gosh, like I said, Bernadette, thank you for the idea when I saw your shawl. But mine is not actually going to be a shawl. Mine's going to be a vest. But what will happen is when I do this, and I noticed this a lot on Pinterest. You guys know I don't have sponsors like that, but give me a call. Um, <laughs> you can literally take this. And have it down like that and that way you have this beautiful point that comes down right here on your fabric now historically speaking yes there are some designs like that historically speaking and what it does is it makes not only a good draping this way because you're going to put that dart in. But what that does is it makes makes for good collaring. So it's like you're already having a spot here, right? That you're going to do this. And you have that you have that point right here. And that is actually, if you look in historical garments, there are actually historical garments that are draped like that. Yes, I know this is wrinkled. But I like to make sure that even when I do a piece, look, I had cut pieces that are shaped like this. And look, that itself is a good collar piece. Just 
turn that under and then put that in and look look how beautiful that just blends right in because look this pattern is this right here so it just comes right into that so yeah that's that's pretty much gonna work Although you can make a necktie out of this too. I just thought about that. Look. Look, you can make a necktie. Why? I don't know. But you could. Um, <laughs> so I have a couple of pieces of that one cut like that. Um, and then I have two of these. Which, of course, you know, can be a belted area. But I'm going to vest... If I didn't do belted, I would probably go ahead and bring this up as a collar, but I would have to cut it here and then tuck it back. But, or you could just go ahead and use this for a collar um, because you're gonna have excess, you know, you can always figure out how you wanna sleeve it for a vest. But look at that. Still, um, when you do this and you have the uh, pattern pieces, the patterned fabric, I, sh I should say that right, the patterned fabric, try to match the side that would go with that as best as possible. And I believe it's this one. Yes, indeed it is. Um, so you actually would want to pair this up as good as possible so that when you're coming over here to make your collar piece, you want to make sure, and of course I'll take that and roll it under. But here's what I usually do with these parts here is I cut them off and use them as bias tape. Um, that, that is exactly what I do with that, is I cut it and I make it into a bias tape. So, I mean, there's plenty of things that you can either do with these pieces by themselves, or, like I said, thanks to watching Bernadette, it's like, I was like, hmm, I wonder if that half, you know, that, that yard would work. And as you can see, like draping it like this, because my dress form isn't my actual size, but draping it like this, you know, really helps when you want to figure that out. Or even draping it like this, that, you know, really helps. And uh, I'm really thinking with as much fabric as here, yeah, look how big it is compared to the amazing disappearing shower. Yeah, that's not going to work. See, you guys, you guys thought she's going to pull off some sort of magic trick. She holds up this fabric, right? She's going to hold up this fabric and then all of a sudden... No, I'm still here. Anyway, all of a sudden just... But that doesn't work because you can see me go out of frame. <laughs> it only works if you have the editing program to do that. <laughs> click, click, click. Anyway, so we like to joke around. Um, so yeah, pretty much I have a lot of this. Did I make this into a dress? No. Not going to be. <laughs> but I do have that other red fabric. See, like, that wouldn't go around me like that. That's why I'm thinking, okay, well, cut this in half. And then I have my pieces to drape for making the vest. There's enough here for, like, the front portion and most to the back portion and doing some sleeving. Um, like I've said before, 
let's not forget that we need to use what's left of our fabrics. And as um, a lot of history uh, founders would say, the cabbage, the leftover cabbage of our fabrics. Um, let me get my water and close my pins for now. But, um, yeah, let's not forget that we need to use our leftover cabbage of fabrics in order to do what we need to do. And I'm not worried about coming over here and just chillaxing with you guys. Because, oh, I sat over there for so long. I actually <laughs> need to sit over here for a few. And this, this right here, sitting here chatting with you, now this gives me the opportunity to actually show you something. Ooh. Remember I mentioned the mock-up for my moccasin. Okay, so what I need to do is I need to cut across here. And then what this will do is this will look like a shoe piece. See like that? It already looks like a foot. Once you cut that across there, you get a pair of uh, scissors. But, yeah, once you literally cut here and here, right, what it does is it releases the tension in the paper. And this is for my right foot. My right foot isn't exactly shaped like my left foot. So what that does is actually gives you the top of your moccasin. So this now looks similar to the top of a shoe. Look at that. Look at that. I'm teaching you guys something about You know what? There's another history bounding channel. She makes shoes other than the history bounder. Go check her out. I, I, I'm just going to drop her link in both of these videos. Um, that makes shoes. I mean, ever since I got into the history bounding community, um, and it's about sewing, I love it because I've always been into history. And how I found the history bounding community was um, Morgan Dahmer. So I actually have to thank Morgan Dahmer for helping me find the history bounding community. Otherwise, I would not have found the history bounding community on YouTube or Instagram. And I quite have to thank you for that and also leave the links for Bernadette Banner, Kathy Hay, because Hay, She's working on the beautiful peacock dress. If you guys don't know about the peacock dress, you are missing out. Oh my goodness. Okay. If you want to know what my, my right foot is shaped like, it's that. That's weird. Uh, it's weird. Okay, that's a women's size 10 right foot. But that's only because I actually drew around my foot on purpose. Um, now, to do the, uh, it's what's called a stoke pipe for your moccasin. You actually put a piece of paper, and I gotta get a bigger piece, it's too small. Um, or I could tape some extra pieces on here. Wait, oh, you know what? my paper from um, Death Wish Coffee. I'll just use that. Um, because I always make pattern out of that paper now. 
Um, so anyway, this is just to show you the historical application of one way to cut out for making that part for the uh, for that part of your leg, for the lower part of your leg, um, and how it would go onto your mock in the first place. Um, so, <laughs> I feel like I should have Joaquin Lolage right here in the, the room with me. Um, maybe he's here in spirit. I don't know. He's still breathing as far as I know. Um, but he's actually how I learned to make my moccasin um, pattern, which I think is great. Because I put some seam allowance on there. I did mark for seam allowance for this, which is great because we always need seam allowance. This fabric feels good on my back right now. I just have to be careful not to touch the blue silk because um, that is real silk. Uh, I have two bolts of real silk, the blue and the pink. Now, as for history bounding, it was very rare for you to actually use real silk unless you uh, were in Asia or unless they, you know, people had already traveled the Asian countries and got the silk which silk fabric back then was not cheap um no that was not cheap for anyone you had to be in certain prefectures in order to get the finest silks possible oh my ribs I'm having a good day. I'm not going to let that get me. No, that's not going to get me. Um, I started to react to having a small seizure, but I'm keeping a positive mind. And I'm going to tell you what, that is really and seriously what keeps me going is keeping that positive mindset. I'm, I'm just going to say it. Keeping that positive mindset really helps me go. Now, as for what other projects I have coming up other than my regalia, um, I'm thinking like, okay, I have my regalia, which I need to do. Of course, I'm going to finish the pants because that's going to be wearable mock-up. Um, I just might enjoy the crap. Who knows? I might just like seriously enjoy those so much. Now, um, like I said, I wouldn't normally make a European style dress. But, you know, some history bounders really inspire me because I think they're beautiful. I think, I just think that they're beautiful. Okay. And I do have a fabric here I have this fabric right here let me see how many yards I have in this one I have oh my gosh that's one two three four five six Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, I have twelve yards of this. Twelve yards. Now, mind you, I did get this from Sam's Fabrics before he went out of business. This is a beautiful fabric, a beautiful stripey fabric. Um, I was thinking, you know, what should I do? You know, what should I make out of this? My first thought was pants. And now I'm seeing like these beautiful 
garments that you're making in the history building community. And it's inspiring me to actually want to sit here and design out like a two piece. <laughs> I have my my stuff right here. It's kind of funny, right? Hey, anybody on Instagram recognize this little beastie? I was just doodling one day. I got a I got to sign that. Hey, you guys are watching me sign my artwork. So, um, I've signed this. If you watched uh, the cat in any of my videos, that tuxedo cat, that's, that's, that's him. Um, so, okay, here's my thought is I've been really inspired to do one of the dresses, but for me, I don't like to have things like seriously up around my neck too much. And I do know that there are some Victorian style dresses where it does not necessarily come up like that. The bodice piece for this, of course, it, it will come across. Um, and we will go like that. And then, of course, of course, what the, oh my gosh, what's wrong with me? Of course. Who the heck says of course? <laughs> that that was just I don't know where that came from. It came from my mouth is where it came from. But that was weird. I've never said of course before. Like that was weird to come out of my mouth. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the bodice piece and make it separate from the uh, the bottom. And while I'm sitting here designing this, I really like, I'm going to turn this design around and show it to you guys in just a moment. So one moment, please. Um, yeah, in a moment, and, um, I'll show you why, because a lot of these bodice pieces that, you know, you could take the top separate than the bottom, and this is true, I really want my history bounders to think about this. When you're designing something and you're trying to figure out what else can, how else can this be worn, how else can this particular garment style be worn in today's world. Um, there are different ways to style it and it actually makes you look more uh, eloquent than, than a lot of people would normally think of you. I don't know how people think of you, but you look elegant because you've put on a piece, let's say um, you have a pair of jeans that you can dress up, or you have a pair of pants that you can dress up, then uh, absolutely you can do that. And um, that's just a, just a rough sketch. That's just a rough sketch. Um, Somebody, either my phone is slow or somebody's messaging me. It's one of those two. Anyway, um, so you can literally like style this out so that it's a particular bodice style and you have your hook eye enclosure in the middle. 
but the rest of it is like that. I'll check that in a moment. Don't don't even worry about it. Um, so yeah, that's how we would do that. And then of course, you know, do the skirting. Do the sleeves however you want. I found like I really found a particular style that I like. Where like the silver buttons are on it. Then that kind of reminded me of that old song, Miss Mary Mac, 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 all dressed in black 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 with silver buttons all down her back and there's actually like some creepus history behind that but hey um but there are styles that we can take from Edwardian Victorian era um and dress that elegantly for today and you could wear it out you dress it up you could dress it down um you have a chance to wear like a pair of jeggings or leggings and a pair of boots just a dressy pair of sneakers <coughs> there are so many different ways to take your style concepts and so make that work for today's uh society and like i said you know Showing you guys how to fashion, um, how the fashion of the uh, moccasin pattern goes. And um, of course, you know, I'll be using a different cloth to make my mock up of my mocks. <coughs> Excuse me, let me get a drink of water. Hmm. And that's why I keep plenty of water on hand. It's like you can get a dry throat. And then I gotta get a zipper out. I do have to get a zipper out. I'm so excited to actually use my zipper foot. Sorry for this noise. But New Jersey, that's what we're supposed to do with the bottles. But, um, yeah, I'm going to actually grab a granola bar in a few minutes just for something to snack on. But, uh, yeah, because I don't like to eat, like, super late. I had a plate of nachos for, like, lunch, brunch, whatever you want to call it, for brunch. And then I'm like, you know what? But with that, I also had like a couple of other things. I'm like, you know what? I think I'm, I'm fine. My friend still says I need to eat more calories, but whatever. It is what it is. Um, so yeah, let me uh, get these videos uploaded. I still have one small canvas left. Then, let's see what is in here. My little book of giddy giddies. My little book of giddies. Mm -hmm. I to see that. Oh, here we go. I think I've shown this dragon to you guys before. I drew this one year when I had a bad seizure and got injured and was down for a month because of an injury due to epilepsy. And while I'm down, you know, I tend to give myself stuff to do. As you can see, for a month, I was actually drawing that dragon. I'm still not done with it. It's been like Oh my gosh, how many years has that been? It's been a couple of years or so. Now it's been about three years or longer. No, oh, it's been longer than that. Come to think. Excuse me. Come to think about it. Um, that I drew that. And because um, I've lived here for two years now. So I've had a roof over my head for two years. In which I'm grateful Always be grateful for the chances and opportunities that come to you and never look a gift 
horse in the mouth and then walk away. Because you may never get that chance in your life again. This is true. You may never get that chance in your life again. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, I have to finish up that Star Trek shirt. Um, I just need to put a piece of stretchy fabric across. Or just put a whole band of stretchy fabric. And then I can just wear it as a pajama. Um, like that. And not have to worry about it. Because it's not going to show nothing. Um, and then, uh, oh my gosh, yeah, I have a lot of teaching to do, so, uh, it's going to be very, very exciting, so, yeah, very exciting, so, Oh my gosh, yeah. Uh, so there's a lot of things for the history bounding community to look for off of my channel and everybody else. <clears throat> there seriously is. So um, I hope you guys stay tuned as we all grow together in the channel. Now, um, I have other things coming up starting next month to add into the channel. Whoa, right? Let's see. March. Yeah, I really got to get started on my Raquel. <laughs> because I have some bead work to do, which means I have to get a loom. So I'll be teaching you guys how to, um, this video is going to be a lot longer than the other one. Sorry, I had to get some more water. Um, it's getting parched. <clears throat> but anyway, um, oh, uh, I will be getting a bead loom and showing you guys and also telling you the history between a lot of people don't know or had never thought of um, Native Americans going from using shell, <clears throat> shells to using, um, the beads that the Europeans brought over. Yeah. Um, a lot of people have never really thought about that. Uh, or the tools. So, I will do my best to bring to you hairstyles of the Native American culture, <coughs> different parts of our history, um, including why there is a documentary called The Cannery Effect. Um, that was supposed to be a two-part documentary, but I only found the first part of it. Um, Yeah, I only, I only found the first part of it, but, like, if you watched it, you'd be like, oh, see, now I never knew, I never knew that. See, a lot of people just don't know. Um, I can tell you in our history for Native American culture, <clears throat> all those movies that you've ever watched where it shows somebody dressed up in fake regalia um, and scalping a white person. <laughs> oh, um, yeah. The, not how that went down in history. It was the other way around. The other way around. Native American hair was long sought after, but there's a whole other video for that. Um, 
because I know I'm going to run out of space on this little laptop soon. But uh, yeah, there there's a lot of history to teach you guys about Native American hairstyles. What tribes those hairstyles came from. Will I be doing the hairstyles with my long hair? Absolutely, we'll try. Will I see if I can get my hands on a tribal comb to comb out my hair? Um, most combs were made out of animal bone. Don't be offended by that. The tribes did not. The tribes are well known for not wasting animal product. <clears throat> and that's why in tribal history, um, I would say like before whatever centuries when the earth started to get sadly littered, um, you didn't find a lot of litter because um, there really wasn't any. You didn't see the, like a bunch of animal bones laying around or animal skins just going to waste. And there's some history behind that and I will be happy to bring that history to you. So, um, yeah, look forward to a plethora of cultural history, um, which a lot of people don't know about, and how we went from buckskin to broadcloth and other cloths for um, regalia. There is a history behind that as well, so I will bring that to you. Um, oh yeah, oh yeah, here's the good one. You're gonna love this. I'm also going to bring to you the history of the peace pipe. I don't own one, but I will bring you <laughs> Ooh, the history of the peace pipe and what is a meaning behind if you don't already know the meaning don't spoil it for other people um but uh yeah i will be happy to bring you the meaning of the native american peace pipe and the sweat lodge and about preserving the food, um, the terminologies for the long huts, and different kinds of long huts, wigwam, TP. You'll see they're all different. People would think a wigwam is a TP. Um, but there were a lot of structures that were able to be broke down like such the TP and very few wigwams, very few. Um, and the long hut was a permanent building. So see, there's a lot of history cut out that people just don't put in history, if that makes any sense to you. Um, so everybody out there, get ready to learn some history and stay happy, stay healthy, stay positive, and as always, stay blessed. And I have some videos to upload, and I will see you later.